Good morning, girls and boys, um, but also to parents, grandparents, neighbours, uh, fellow teachers, uh, and indeed friends of the school from across the world. I've now delivered an assembly every morning during lockdown, and that's, that's over 50 assemblies in total. And I confess that uh, somehow these morning talks have taken on a life of their own. Uh, they're seen on Twitter, Instagram, and so on. And I've been touched to receive comments and engagements from China, from Hong Kong, Thailand, from across Europe, Russia, Canada, and so on. But, and, and this could be an advantage to you, girls and boys, with an online assembly, you have the freedom not to watch. Oh, there's a, there's a school assembly. It's old Holloway wittering on about something again. And you may well take the decision that you can use your time better. Um, I have to say, I've heard that some of your, some of your parents sit you down and, and force you to watch them. And, uh, well, if that's the case, I'm very, very sorry about it. Um, but perhaps you start the assembly on your phone and then carry on making your breakfast or brushing your teeth or, or even jump in the shower. Um, that's something I tend to do with Radio 4's Today programme. I can't say I listen to it, but I, I half listen and sometimes I just drift off into my own thoughts and perhaps infused with a hint of something I've heard. Now, all this is different from the traditional school assembly when you enter chapel um, or the main hall. Uh, in single file, you sit silently as part of a collective event. And in such times, often there is a certain amount of waiting around. And then the headmaster or headmistress begins. And you are, in a sense, a captive audience. Captive in the sense that you can't really get up and leave. Uh, without a whole lot of fallout, probably involving detentions and letters to your parents. So what do you do if the head teacher is wittering on about something and it's of no interest to you? There was a time when everyone, just about everyone, went to church on a Sunday. And many schools used to start with an early morning chapel service. And again, the chaplain or some other eminent person would deliver a sermon. Well, I've heard quite a few sermons in my time, and certainly as a boy, I sat through hundreds and hundreds of school assemblies. Um, well, sometimes the speaker was good, and one's attention was held, and a few times I was enlightened and uplifted. But I have to say, many, many other times, I used to say to myself, this is agony, I just can't wait to get out of here. And this is the point I'm getting to. Arguably, in previous years, children and teenagers were subjected to more periods of dullness and boringness than they are today. Now, I know I sound old, but when I was young, we used to have to get off the sofa to, to change the television channel or to lift up the arm on the gramophone in order to turn over the LP. But today we just flick through channels. Um, if, we, if we don't like the beginning of a song, we just jump to the next track. Uh, and perhaps we are consequently more restless than we used to be, less inclined to put up with periods of monotony. But monotony, or being bored, can be a wonderful creative opportunity to explore the deepest recesses of our, of our minds, to enter all the rooms within our heads, and of course to let our imagination roam freely, leaving behind all that is earthbound. Are you one of those who say, oh, I'm bored? Well, here's my challenge. I venture to suggest that no one with imagination could ever utter those words. Some of you older students will know of Terry Waite. Uh, he was kidnapped in Lebanon. He was held captive, uh, sometimes chained to the floor as a hostage for months, indeed years on end. After years in captivity, he was released and he wrote of his experiences. And I commend his book, Taken on Trust, to you. Uh, throughout his time, he, he journeyed. He found freedom inside his head. And despite immensely painful and challenging times, he was never bored. 
And indeed, he even found humour and laughter within his head during these times. And this is my plea to you. The next time you might be tempted, perhaps as a habit, to say, oh, I'm bored, try to catch yourself and reflect. Perhaps you felt bored at times during lockdown or, or on a long car journey, or when you've been made to sit through a long speech, perhaps my start a term assembly in the theatre. But can you at these moments fight that phrase, I'm bored, and instead enter the labyrinth of your mind, perhaps to discover new pathways that haven't been trod before. Perhaps there is fantasy, humour, even a business idea lodged within your mind. But if one is always jumping from, from one Spotify track to another, or from one level of a computer game to another, if one is always trying to fill the space with some form of activity, we risk closing off the most exciting area of our life, and that is our mind. So today, I'm not only going to wish you a good day, but also some moments of boredom in the hope that you'll drift off into creative and imaginative thinking within your own heads. <laughs>